Welcome to Inside UKFC, the podcast. Here's your hosts, Dakota DeJava and Aaron AB. Hey guys, welcome to Inside UKFC podcast. Um, I'm Dakota, one of the brand ambassadors for the show. And I'm joined today by Aaron AB, who is our head matchmaker. We are here today, obviously, to announce a bit of big news for the next show, which is our 20th. Um, which is happening September the 17th. Um, but for now, we're going to get um, promoter and owner of UKFC into the chat so we can ask him a few questions about how this all started. There he is. Hi, Steve. Hello. Steve Nightingale, yeah. you okay? Yeah, you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, obviously, we've got some big news to announce today, but just to start with, we're going to ask you a few questions. Um, and I think a good place to start is, um, how did this all start in the beginning? Like, how did it get going at the beginning? Uh, well, it started f- uh, firstly with another lad. I went in partnership with a lad from Blackburn, uh, Rob Freeman. Um, we both had small shows in like sports halls and what have you. Um, and I just felt like we wanted to do something bigger. Like everyone were doing small shows in, in sports halls. We just felt like we wanted to just go that one step better. So we got together. Obviously, we used to help each other first. I would always put my guys on his show. He would always put his on mine. And we just thought, why don't we just try and go together, put it together, make it a little bit easier for us. We're not both doing four or five shows a year. We'll both get together and do five just just as a, as a, as a team. Um, to do so then, we wanted to obviously look for a different venue. So we went uh, looking around... Preston and Blackburn, wondering where where would be best to go. Uh, we come across the the two best show, uh, venues was Preston Guild Hall in Preston, and then uh, King George's Hall in Blackburn. Um, so then, obviously, it was a big step for us. We used to doing 400, 500 tickets in a in a small sports hall to having to like sell maybe two thousand in the Preston Guild Hall or something similar in Blackburn yeah. in this uh, King George's Hall. So. We obviously sat down, talked about it, wondered how how would be best to go about it, and how would we take the pressure away from being able to sell all them them seats. And obviously, we Rob's idea was for me to fight on it, which was a uh, which was a good idea from him. <laughs> Don't know if it was a, such a good idea for me, but that's how it that's how it all came about anyway. And obviously, we just, with me being on the show, we decided to go with Preston, so Preston Guildhall, and obviously. Preston Guildhall is probably one of the best venues in the country, if not the best venue underneath places like the MEN Arena and stuff. So that's how it all that's how yeah. it all came about. Yeah, and am I right by saying as you was on that show too? Yeah, I was on the first one as well. Yeah. Uh, I think I was a couple before you, you and I see you were the show. main event. What was it what was yeah. it like to like fight on your own show? Um it, it, it started off really exciting. But obviously, become a major chore. Um, we used to generally only get in the yeah. venue at sometimes one o'clock in the morning on the Friday night, on the early Saturday morning. So we would spend maybe five hours uh, getting the cage up onto the third floor, which is where the lifts took us to. We had to unload the cage, put it in, into the venue, set it up, put the stickers on the cage. I'd sometimes be still in the venue at six o'clock in the morning, putting st- uh, the sponsor stickers on the cage. Then I had to go home, try and get a little bit of sleep, get up, and then get back to the venue to start setting the venue up, getting ready for the for the um, for the fans turning up and and whatnot. So I, I remember it was like, hard you know, work, being in the back as well, warming you up, and like people coming up to you with all these questions about uh, where's this guy, where's this yeah. guy, have you got this guy's ticket money? And we're like about to go out fifteen twenty minutes before you fight. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. what's going on here? We just leave him alone for a bit. I remember Rob came in one time and it was just before I was going to, uh, who was it before? I think it was about an hour before we were going to fight. I just really just like cornered my last guy and I went into the back to try and like start getting in the zone. And he come in and said, somebody's nicked a load of tickets at the front door and they're selling them in town. <laughs> You're going to have to deal with that yourself. I'm, I'm fucking done now. I've done everything I, I, I have to do now. I've got to have a fight. I've got to prepare to have a fight here. Yeah, because leave, leave me alone kind of that's thing. That's what I mean. You were like from... We had like conversations before you would fight on it, and you'd be like, "Oh, I need, I need to do it to get people in there." But I was like, "You're cornering on the night. You're promoting the night and fighting on the same night." So obviously, if I'm right by saying the first show was 2016, is that right? Yeah. 
Yeah, how do you feel it's progressed now? Obviously, we're in 2022. We're moving on to our 20th show. How do you feel like it's it's gone like throughout the years? Um, I think it's I think it's gone as well as it could have because obviously we've gone through unprecedented times, haven't we? With COVID, like I think we got yeah. to um, I think we got to well we, to be honest with you, we had problems before COVID. We, we, we could just address a little bit. We with the venue, we obviously had the best venue in the in the country, like we've said we, that we think uh, for uh, for a, yeah. a regional show. And uh, obviously, we got to we got to number nine, UKFC nine. Sorry, we'd done UKFC nine. We were just about to do new UKFC number ten. We was about two weeks out from the show, maybe a little bit less. And uh, the the guild hall ended up shutting down. Something had happened with the with the owner of the lease. They they tried kicking him out, took the taking the lease back off him, and ended up shutting the guild hall. So we had like under two weeks to put a show together, uh, which was UKFC ten. We ended up going up in, going into a nightclub. We managed to pull it off. We was we was ready for cancelling it. Uh, was you was you part of the show then? Was you working the show then, Ebbs? Yeah, well, uh, Alex Valiandes was the main event, wasn't he? Yeah. So you was you was working the show then? Yeah, right? I was I was work, I was helping you match me for the show mm. back then. Yeah, yeah. We so yeah, we had like I think we had nine, ten days maybe to to uh, to turn it round, get it get replan everything, uh, and and obviously work out how we was gonna. We was going to run it in a different venue, totally smaller venue as well. So, but we managed to we managed to pull it off. Um, after the, I think we went to the Imperial, if I'm right in saying that. Yeah, and then we did we did 11 to 13 in the Imperial, um, and then obviously we hit COVID. So we, we we the show was shut down for more or less two years, 18 months, I think, in in total actually. Uh, um, so I, I feel like this show has progressed, but I feel like it would have progressed a lot more, like a lot of businesses would have in these uh, in these times. But you didn't uh, didn't yeah. decide to come back easy from COVID either, did you? No, did we? No, we ended up. Uh, we were we we decided we was going to do one in Wales, weren't we? We we felt yeah. like the the Welsh uh, government was going to release the. Uh, the restrictions, restrictions a little yeah. bit sooner. They were looking like they were gonna we were gonna be able to to do it in Wales sooner. So we had arranged to do a show in Wales. Um, we had an indoor show. It was it was in gonna be inside your gym, Herbs, weren't it? In the football originally. It was gonna be in the football pitches. In the, yeah. in the football pitches, yeah. So we we're gonna do an indoor because that was the only uh, that's the only place we was allowed over thirty people. So the venues we would normally use, like the Imperial and stuff, was only allowed up to thirty people in at that time. It was only football pitches and stuff like that that we could that you could get away with having more people in. So yeah. we decided to go to Wales. We had the canvases made. We had everything every, everything structured around having a Welsh show. Um, and then obviously the, the the Welsh restrictions didn't get lifted in time, or they got put back. And then obviously the the council had said to us, "No, you can't do it. You can't do it indoors." So then. We, we decided to go and do it outdoors. So we were going to do it outdoors in Wales. We went went around loads of places, ended up at rugby <laughs> pitches, all sorts of stuff. We ended up at a rugby pitch uh, in, in Wales, not too far away from your gym. Yeah, it? Football Five, ten minutes it was, away. yeah. Yeah, so we, we then arranged for um, like some kind of cover to go over the cage, sound systems to go outside, everything we needed to do to put in place to, to then do an outdoor event, which obviously opens up a lot of a lot of other problems which could go wrong on the day. But then the council, we put in our for our licence to do that and the council stopped us due to noise. Could have been a noise, noise pollution. Yeah, noise pollution. A football pitch in the middle of nowhere. So, <laughs> again, within, within inside two weeks, we had to find another venue. We ended up moving countries. We brought it back to England, back to Preston. We had to get our, 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 another venue set, another... We had to get our licence. Luckily, we have a good re, uh, relationship with Preston Police licensing, so... We got the we got the license within 24 hours. We got the venue within two days, and then we went and did because we'd ended up we, because so many people hadn't had a fight and so many people wanted to fight. We ended up doing two, two shows, shows in two days, so which is the first time yeah, we've ever done that. that as well, which was massive for us. And obviously, we was one of the first shows to come back after COVID. Um, that was obviously the toughest toughest shows we've ever done, Abs, weren't it? Yeah, like we the, had the, we had the leak, didn't we? The roof. The, the things we had to deal with. God. Honestly, the things we had to... I, I, I meant leading up to it. I didn't even mean the problems we had on the shows. <laughs> the roof was leaking the night. You know what, though? You pulled it, it out the bag. Yeah, when it rained, we, it was going in the cage, so you had to delay 
Delay the fight for a bit. Paul, we had to give Paul Crossley a brolly. Paul Crossley's the referee, and we had to give him a brolly. He, he was mopping the he was mopping the water up while the fight was running. <laughs> and then he, it just got too much. It was a monsoon outside. Yeah, Not only did it rain in, Not only did it rain into the cage in the middle because there was a hole in the roof. It flooded behind the bars, so the, the the girls working behind the bars was ankle deep in water. So I was running round trying to empty the fridges and turn all the fridges off before the before the bar staff got electrocuted. <laughs> so, oh yeah. my god! It's been eventful, well, believe me. Um, obviously, yeah. Talking about venues, I think your plans are to go back to the guild hall. We're they? hoping so. Yeah, like, it's still it's still in a legal battle at the to. moment. I don't know how long it's going to be going on for, but. Yeah. Our plan is to go back there definitely for the future because obviously, like I said, I believe and I think Abe believes it's the best best uh, venue in the country underneath things like uh, the MEN and the Echo and, and whatnot. Yeah. So hopefully yeah, one yeah. day we get It'd we become get like an there. iconic part of UK MMA, didn't it? It was the first the first big venue and it looked look, look the part and it's just something yeah. that... Like every show, I'm always asking you, can we go back to the Guild Hall, man? Can we go back to the Guild Hall, man? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's something definitely for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you see UKFC going in the future? Like, obviously, you've got loads of big back plans. Back to the Guild got, Hall, I hope. Plans to announce today, but... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully back to the Guild Hall, eventually. <laughs> but, yeah, no, to, to be honest with you, I, we, have, uh, we have that many... We have that many plans, me and Ayers. We're talking every day on the phone. We have all sorts of stuff we want to do, yeah. but we've obviously got to try and reel ourselves in as well. We, I don't really want to. I never really want to look too far ahead of what we've got in front of us. Yeah. We're renowned for obviously putting up the best fights in the country, the best fight cards together in the country, and that's how I want it to stay. I don't want to dilute what we do, you know, and what we're, what we're best at. So looking too far ahead isn't really what I want to be doing. I want to concentrate on what we've got in front of us, and that's UKFC 20 up to, up to now. We've got some of the some major plans for what we want to do on the show, and then obviously we have got plans what we want to do in the future, but I just want to concentrate on, on this one now. I think it's going to, be a, going to be a belter. I only started out helping match okay. in a few fights. Now I'm doing a frigging podcast. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Like he, doesn't love it. <laughs> he loves it honestly he tells me every day I, 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 he can't thank me enough for giving him a job <laughs> well then um obviously it's our 20th show september the 17th who's gonna announce the big news now Aaron, go on Ebs, i'll let you announce the news yeah <laughs> so Abby, the big, wanted the big, to do this bit yeah the, the big plan for the 20th of september that We've been uh, talking about and hinting, hinting about on social media is four men tournament in our in weight in in as many weight classes as possible that we can manage to get. Uh, that that's our focus. Okay. So there'll be two fights on one night. The first okay. round will be two three minute rounds. Obviously, if it's one round apiece, there'll be a third round, and then the two winners are fighting a three round fight in the final to either become the cha- the champion if the champion's in the category defending the belt or the interim champ if he's not, who will eventually fight the champion on our next show in December. Yeah, so they're going to be Grand Prix, aren't they? We're going to be, it's going to be a separate championship. So if, if, the t- if the champion is in there, then he's going to leave with two belts. If the champion, and he, and he wins. If the, if the champ is in the tournament and he loses, the winner leaves with two belts. If obviously the champion isn't in the tournament because he doesn't want to be or, or because he's not available on the night, then the the, uh, the champ the, the person who wins the tournament will leave with the Grand Prix belt. The Grand Prix belt also you won't need to defend this belt. This is a separate belt, different different completely to our UKFC uh, championship belts, which you have on uh, you have one of them, D, don't you? I do, yeah. I have an amateur one. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you might have had it in the background. <laughs> What you I might, might be in the out, but you're not having that back. <laughs> you should have worn it for the, for the show. Yeah, I thought you'd have had it pinned on your wall. So, <laughs> next yeah. time, next time. Yeah, so this one will be totally different. You're not, they're not going to have to defend this belt. But obviously, if the, yeah. if the champ's in the tournament and, and they leave with the championship belt, that's the one they would have to, they would have to defend. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. otherwise, like Abe said, they will leave with the, with the Grand Prix belt 
but then be the interim champ, so mm. then fight our champ. So yeah, exciting times. Right. We just need and, we just need six yeah. men really in in as many weight categories as possible. Six, because obviously, Ebs, I'll let you explain what we want. Yeah, obviously, we need a backup mm. fight on the night as well. Uh, so we'll have we'll have four people in the main tournament, and then a backup fight in the night in case one of the winners can't go to the final. Uh, that that will be the plan. Or even mm. if something happens with the weight cut the day before, uh, so we're aiming to get six. Of the best competitors who have competed on the show, preferably before and being being competitors on on the show to go ahead on the night in the Grand Prix tournament. Yeah, have we got any um have we got any weight classes confirmed, like finished off, mm-hmm. or are we still looking for? We yeah, we we'll have, have to drop the, any hints, uh, and the aim is to start announcing them <laughs> on, on this podcast as the weeks go on. Uh, that that that's yeah. a plan, and and get the guests on as well as we go through it and. Have them talk talk about the tournaments and do the live jaws as as they're on the podcast as well. And uh, have we and build have, it have we got a set set have we got a set day about a set day when these podcasts are going to be going out? Do we need to talk about that a little bit, Herbs? Uh, we can we can aim to get them out every <laughs> Sunday is the plan, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll obviously Sunday, be doing uh, the live draw as well, which will be interesting. We'll get um try and get the fighters together and, and pull the names out properly so that it's fair as well. Yeah, so we have got one. We have got one. Uh, one or two of them filled already, Abs, haven't we? So we're go- are we going to release... We're not going to... We're going to release it live on the show who we've got in, in, in the actual tournament, aren't we? aren't we, in the Grand Prix? Yes. And then we're going to also do a live draw on the, on the same podcast to see who fights who in which... Uh, in the uh, semis. Yeah, well, yeah. I was thinking that we'd announce the tournament competitors... And then get them on all together and do the live jaws with them on. I see. Interesting. So we're gonna go. Are we gonna do one each week, one weight class each week? That's that's a plan. Or, or at least if if we yeah. can get them confirmed, one a week. If not, we'll get on some special guests or other fighters who are competing on the night and and get the podcast to in, interview fighters, people who've been part on the show people who will be part of the show and just uh, help promote UK MMA and, and, and promote the guys as well who are competing and give, give them a platform to talk on and build on their fight and like obviously give them something that they can help build their career towards because we all know um, part of fighting is being good with the media, being able to do interviews, so we're giving them that yeah. early stage in their career as well where they can mm-hmm. go on and develop and and get used to all the things that come with with fighting and like obviously I've always said the aim the aim of UKFC from my point of view is get the best fighters in the UK and get them to a level where they're competing on the world stage and and fighting for the UFC and I think being part of that is uh, being good with the media as well. So obviously these four man tournaments are not just for one weight. Can you tell us what weight classes were? we're looking for here we're aiming to fill all weight classes from 57 kilograms to 77 we feel like they're the most okay. competitive weight divisions and the most fighters we get on the show obviously we struggle above 77 for for getting uh, many fights i don't think we've had a 84 kilogram fight on the show in a while so it's just being able to build up those mm. those main divisions some of them already have champions who might be in the tournament defending their belt some of them uh, might might be looking to win and become the interim champ and the UKFC 20 champion and being able to fight the champion on our future show in December. But the aim is to get the most competitive divisions from 57 to 77 filled up and uh, look forward to uh, a good night of fights. Yeah, so if anyone wants to fight, we're obviously looking for matches now. Our head matchmaker is matching. Yeah, get get in touch with me. So and, uh, just contact the show. I'll be able to point you in the right direction if and uh, tell you where we're at. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so the next time we're on here, we'll obviously be announcing one of the weight classes, which is really exciting. Um, but for now, we're going to leave it there. It was nice chatting to you both. And finding out a little bit about UKC and where it's all come from. But um, we will be back next week, obviously, with another podcast. Thank you. Yes, thank you.